Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us for another Wednesdays with Winton. Uh, Winton Marcellus will be joining us in just a moment for a casual Q&A here live on Instagram. Thanks for joining us again for another week. I think this is week 12 or 13, kind of crazy. Uh, this will be, uh, after this episode, we're going on a brief Wednesdays with Winton a hiatus for the summer. Uh, we'll hopefully be back in September, and until then, uh, we have a ton of really exciting programming we'll be announcing in the next week or so, so stay tuned for that. And in a moment, Winch will be joining us. And before he does, if you want to comment uh, your name and where you're tuning in from and start commenting any questions you have for Winton. Winton. All right, now, what's going on, Maddie? What you talking about? Well, I wanted to uh, kick things off talking about we are just about to announce uh, this little Instagram Live exclusive for everyone tuning in, <laughs> uh, what uh, Jazz Lincoln Center's energy, output, and attention is going to be for the month of July, which is the idea, spirit, and meaning of freedom. So I'm wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit about that. Which well, is very important uh, aspect of our music. We always hear about the freedom of improvisation. And uh, just something that since since jazz was uh, was born, it's always been a key component of the music. Uh, so many great musicians involved in it down through the uh, through through the centuries. Also, the responsibility implied in freedom. We see people exercising that responsibility all over the world. That uh, in in the First Amendment of the Constitution, it's implied that you have to have some type of disagreement to address before elected officials, and it's important to bring your case. Um, before the people and make it be for real mm -hmm. and uh to not to not don't be turned around you know it, it, it's an important thing and as we see by the way the world has picked up on our own uh situation don't feel that that that, that everything that is a protest means violence or means something negative that's just something to take you away from looking at the issue and trying to create a better life for everybody uh, and and let's not forget how new the thought of of things being equitable is Mm. Um, you know, it's only a few centuries old, so we, we, it's something that we have to continue to to pursue. And I'm going. We're going to have a, a a lot of different things, music we're going to put out, readings, and things from many sides of uh, of the ballpark. People tend to think of freedom meaning only them. Mm. You know, the thing about freedom is once you turn it loose, <laughs> it goes everywhere. You don't control who's going to seek their freedom or the 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 the, uh, the tenor of the conversation. But it is important for us to remain in dialogue with this most important thing. I always still would tell my friends down through the years laughing, let's have the same intensity as this we have about the championship hmm. or, or some football games. And I'm a sports fanatic, but freedom is damn sure more important than the last game. So, you know, and it's not going to, it's not going it, to, it won't all come from one angle because there's going to be many, many people with different opinions and different viewpoints, all encouraged, you know, in our family to, to create works, to talk about it, to suggest readings. And it will not only be one opinion or one point of view. Well, I know I'm very excited and I had a little preview of what's to come. So I, mm -hmm. I can't wait for everyone to hear to see it and everyone stay tuned. We'll be announcing some exciting uh, things coming up all to do with the idea and theme spirit of freedom. And on, uh, on that note, I wanted to bring up something interesting. Um, so the ideas in the US Constitution uh, are relevant to the world of jazz as well, right? A group of diverse sure. musicians you know, negotiating in time to create a collective expression that reflects unique personalities and right. values of each individual and for the good of everyone. So right. as, as the nation goes into the holiday weekend, can you speak more uh, on both, on, as a citizen and as a jazz musician, speak more on that, uh, on what, what people could, should, maybe headspace should be or just on that in general? You you know jazz is always a uh, it it came from what was called now street expression but that's not necessarily what it was the street was different at that time but it came from uh, always that, that kind of desire for a richer democracy even somebody like Jelly Roll Martin was really hated because he wanted his publishing rights and he would talk about things and he started clubs and you know so any flaw in his personality was picked up on to define him but if we go through the history of the music of musicians of all races who will find that the most active musicians have always produced music with a certain type of, of reality. It doesn't mean other people's music is not good or that this is the only subject you should discuss. But 
I think that uh, jazz, yeah, the improvisation is our freedom, but the swing is our responsibility. So one thing we laugh about in the, in the Jazz Lincoln Center Orchestra, people spent their lifetime improvising. We play gigs, you might solo one time a night. So when you get down to the end, it's like, here's another gig that somebody who could play did not play. And the, the democracy is how we share our space. And the one thing I'm most proud of in our development is that as we've gone along these years, when we get to the last two or three tunes, everybody in the band starts to look around and try to figure out who hasn't played to create space for them, even if it means giving up their solo. Mm. So, you know, it's, uh, I've learned more just from, from, uh, from the orchestra, seeing how we negotiate each other's space. And uh, I think a good document for us to read in this time is Thomas Paine's Common Sense. It's only, it's only 80 pages, 1773 or four, not 1778 or 1970. I don't know exactly, I'm not Phil Schaap, so <laughs> I'm not exactly right with these dates. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a Federalist document and it talks about avoiding the corruption of kings and mm -hmm. to try to uh, understand that true democracy is with the plurality of the people. And this is a great moment in our reflection to, to go into our history and study great documents and important things. And I always try to direct people to, uh, you know, more profound kind of thinking and the, the, the people who, things that will help you to understand from any side of the field. Because, uh, there's enough people talking in one direction. And, and, and it's also important for us to remember that Lyndon Johnson gave a speech in America called We Shall Overcome. Mm -hmm. And that would be like Trump saying Black Lives Matter. That's the effect that it had on the nation because he was a Southern uh, politician from Texas. And I'll never forget my father told me when he saw Lyndon Johnson get elected, he thought, well, there goes the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. He didn't understand at that time that that Southern politician was going to sign key civil rights uh, legislation and give that type of speech to the nation. So I also direct people to Lyndon Johnson's speech. I think it's 1965. I'm, I'm, I could, I'm not good with my years today, but it's, it's the speech is called We Shall Overcome. It's up online, it's worth reading. You can cherry pick it and read it and pick things that you like. Look at, the, look at those last few paragraphs though. Now you think it was written for today. Mm. That's and 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 I and on that same note too, in the context of jazz and democracy, what's the right amount of tension? <laughs> There's no right amount because tension is not something you control. Hmm. That's the thing about what is the right amount. There's no right amount. I, like I, I can't. That's 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 the beauty of it. You can try to balance tension. So if there's a whole pile of tension coming your way, you can try to figure out how to. And I, I always, I always give sports analogies. You know, people, pe people hate them, but because there's a, a quarterback stand in front of a defense and say, "Wait a second, now it's too much of of, of a pass rush, or it's too much." Hey, if they can bring some pressure, you you better try to figure out how you're going to deal with it. And mm -hmm. if you have something you believe in, bring some pressure to the situation. You know, yeah. and uh, the the more the more tension, the more it means to to people. You know. Yeah, oh, for sure. So and it's, I'm yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. You go, you please. No, please I mean, it, you know, what we have to realize that competition is not, is not a, because there is competition for ideas, for resources, for space, because there's competition does not mean someone is your enemy. But mm -hmm. when you're playing a game and there's no competition and you're just beating on, I mean, it's like, I remember once a great grand chess grandmaster Maurice Ashley beat me in a game. You know, I mean, I, I can't really play. I try to play, but he, I mean, did he want to play another game? <laughs> For what? It's like, no, he hasn't played somebody this, this, this competitive. So when we look around our nation and we see groups of people who are put in, in non-competitive situations, don't keep beating them. I mean, it's, it's just, uh, you know, we have, we have a long way to go. And in jazz, we see the greatest figures. We talked about Jelly Roll. We could talk about Louis Armstrong and realize that just for Louis Armstrong to introduce himself as, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mr. Armstrong. That was a civil rights statement at that time because that meant not boy or the other names that he would be called. Or, or would, of course, Duke Ellington, Black, Brown, and Beige. And we, it goes on and on. And I always give the people of all races, uh, Dave Brubeck, the real ambassadors, all of these works are important. And even the musicians who are doing things today, all of these works are important. Even in works that are not even jazz, whether you like the style of music or not, when people have a civil rights type of social consciousness. It's important to check it out. 
and and you can you can choose whether you are you're interested in it or not. You know, it's it's it's, it's your choice. But this is a good time for this. It's around the election. It's it's a good. We got a pandemic. We got a lot of crisis. A lot of problems going on. This is a good time to examine who we are, and for us to to, to come home, and see who we want to be, and make the changes we need to make, uh, mm. and 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 tear the bandaid off, and be for real about it. And I, I think that's a, a powerful thing. And it seems like such a simple thing. Don't beat, don't pe beat someone when they're already down. Why, why yeah. are you throwing another punch when someone's already on the floor? But it's, it's something, unfortunately, that's the, you know, what, what's the reasoning behind something? You know, as easy as in the old days, somebody go home and beat their wife and their kids. Mm. Okay. Or you kick the dog. Or you, you, well, I remember when I was in elementary school, there was one girl came to the school. There's so much racial tension all the time. But we, we, we was always like white against black. But this one girl, for some reason, they, they decided to pick on her. Oh, they called her every kind of name and stink weed and stink vomit for us. You know, me and my boy Gregory, we were like, damn, man. Unbelievable cruelty toward this, this girl. Mm. And we never could understand it. Like, she never did anything to anybody. And one time they had done a, 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 the school, in a, a, the carport in a different way. And I was running out of the school. I don't know what grade I was in, fifth grade, fourth grade. I was running for, you know, you get out of school, you boom, you take it off, you do right. And I ran right into this new pole that they had put there. Boom, it knocked me out. Bam, I laid on the ground. I was knocked out. Everybody stepped over me. They were going to where they were. This girl stayed, and, and her mama, I, I remember they the only people I had seen had a car that was more raggedy than the car. My daddy, we always had the raggediest cars anywhere. They had a the raggedy white car, and the, the girl and her, I, I never knew her name, you know? I mean, I don't remember her name, because then we didn't really socially, you know, this was what it was. Mm. But the mama drove me to my to my house, and then it was segregated, so if, if, if you had somebody white bring you somewhere, people in my neighborhood was like, man, you're in trouble? And the, the lady was so nice, the mama was so nice, called me baby. What you need, baby? You know, it took me home, and, and I reflect on her, I don't even know why. I, I start to think about her. Just why were people so mean to her? And it goes with childhood, you know, and it start, it's just, hmm. for some reason, she had freckles, her hair looked a certain way, you know, they call her a witch or whatever. I don't know, stupidity that they were doing. We, we of course, were not in any position to be participating in none of that. But it's just, uh, you, you want to ameliorate anxiety. You don't, want, you don't want your anxiety to take your anxiety out on somebody who will give you more anxiety. Hmm. So it's easy to go kick your pet or do hmm. something that, you know, <laughs> Is because if you if you kick the wrong person, you're gonna be much more anxious at the end of that exchange. <laughs> you know that's why, that's why we do it. A mm. big country go jump on a little bitty country, man. You know, that's a waste of firepower. Well, and, and I'm also sorry that you hit that the image of you hitting your head in that pole that was, and that's, <laughs> hey, that's not you... my, my mama used to always tease me and say, "Boy, you lost your mind when you ran into this to that pole." So whenever she'd be messing with me about. I didn't hit it. I ran into it like boom. <laughs> I did, I forgot that they, you know I was so used to running out. Of course, that's, that's life. It was a good wake up call though. I had to lie to all my friends and say some dudes jumped on me. Man, they jumped on me over on Taylor Street. <laughs> like, you should see the other guy. Y'all, you should have saw them. Oh yeah, you can't tell somebody something like that. I ran into a pole. Uh, no. <laughs> well, I also wanted to bring up you brought up uh, uh, Jelly Roll Martin. And we have the, the, the concert from the bulk today. If, if uh, everyone tuning in after this wants a really great concert to go watch uh, and listen to, we released from the vault today. It was a 2017 concert with the Jazz Center Orchestra and Wynton Marsalis. And it's uh, the fantastic Mr. Jelly Lord. So it's a, a really great concert with uh, never before heard arrangements of tunes like King Porter Stomp, Jungle Blues, Black Bottom Stomp, and The Pearls. So I don't know if that was a that was a really fantastic concert. I don't know if you want to speak a bit about uh It was great. Oh. You know, yeah, a concert with our younger musicians playing. Isaiah Isaiah Thompson played. I think uh who we have Micah Thomas playing all kinds of piano. We had um uh Church Swing. Uh, uh he was playing playing all 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 kinds of a piano. I'm trying to remember all of who we had playing. It was a, a lot of people in here together too. It's a fantastic um, concert. They, and they played, they, they were playing on such a high level. Our younger musicians came up and played all kinds of piano. 
and it was great to see them tackle as Joe Winhart played. And we rewrote arrangements. I don't think we played the Pearl because that was my arrangement and I did it too late. So we never we never played that one. But I know I looked down and I saw India Owens' name in our list. I don't know if she's listening. She is an unbelievable. Yes, is. India plays with so much feeling and she teaches with so much feeling. We, I had done a, a, a session on a, a, a film about, about autistic kids and India came in and played and her beat and her swing was so heavy. She was swinging in the studio, even in a booth. So I, I want to want to just shout her out and talk about Rodney Whitaker, the great uh great bassist who I first met in in, in Detroit when he was fifteen to sixteen years old. Every time I talked to him, he was older than the first time I met him with with Marcus Belgrave, and and Rodney had called me when he first heard India. She was I, I guess she was a young teen too. He said, "Man, we got one out here," and he was not lying about uh about the the, the feeling she plays with. And with Sullivan Fortner was playing. Another one of the piano. See, I guess I get these thoughts come to me. Sullivan, we call him Church Swing. He was just unbelievably great. So I'm so proud of all my young musicians play on such a level. Like for me, just to see India's name made me happy, you know, because of the depth of the beat that she plays with and how soulful she is teaching kids and, and, the, and, and her, just how, the, the level of reality of her playing. Mm. Uh, she, plays, she plays with a great deal of reality. And just also the pride I have in all of them. You know, Aaron Deal also played on yep. it. He's great. Sullivan Foster as well. Portner. Fortner, Fortner, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Aaron Deal is on it. You know, he, he's uh, fantastic. Was in, was in EE. Has, has done all kinds of great things with Cecile McLaren Salvat. I want to shout also my homeboy, Jonathan Batiste out. I see him out doing everything. Another from, from, from Kenner, Louisiana. I don't know if somebody even get up out of Kenner. He actually is from Lincoln Manor. Ooh, they country it in us. Uh, there was that good football teams with yellow and black j jerseys and stuff that they, but I, I love seeing what Jay Bat is doing and any of our younger musicians, Russell Hall, they were out in the street in the parade, everything they're doing, I'm so proud of them and, and them asserting their, their individuality. And it's a thing that I always would talk about in class as a student. Sometimes they don't want to hear that in the past about the U.S. Constitution, about rights, about being engaged with the society, about not 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 being afraid of people being mad at you because you express your opinion, even if it's me. It's mm -hmm. a point that I make to them. You don't have to agree with me. Be yourself. F find your, your individuality. If I don't like what you play, play more of it. You know, I always laugh about Jonathan Batiste. I always told him I hate that little... The melodic... The, uh, the, I, I the, hate the, that <laughs> instrument. The melodic, the melodic. So at a certain point, I told him, I don't know, he was 17, 18 or something. I said, man, I hate that instrument. Then every time I saw him, he start playing it, you know. So, and it's you know you got to have that type of attitude about stuff. Yeah, that, I, I was lucky enough to go check out the John Batiste did the uh, the peaceful protest march with music, and I saw India playing and Russell Hall, and it was Julio. It was a bunch of people out there. It was so I had this really proud feeling to like see all of these, all so much of Jazz Lincoln Center out there just making their voice be heard and. And playing, they played for four and a half straight hours marching through the streets. It was a really beautiful thing to see. Hey, you know, hey, I love them. And, and I always tell them, Jazz Lincoln Center is a part of what you're doing. You are you before you're Jazz Lincoln Center. You're Jazz above being Jazz Lincoln Center. You are, you are a, a, an American citizen, larger than all that. And you're a citizen of the planet Earth, larger than all of that. This is your time out here. Express yourself. Do your thing. Get out here. Participate. So, yeah, I can't even describe, like, the kind of pride and the love I have. I see old Joe Sailor out there playing drums. I think about him when he was all of them. It doesn't matter who they are. You know, everybody. I see Jerry Grimes came in and wrote something for us. You know, just an unbelievable virtuosity. And we need all of them all of them out here. And we need them to be free and to do their thing. And uh, it's, it's important to be, to be forceful and to be confident. And to express yourself. And you don't, don't have to look around for approval every time you do something from whoever. You know, <laughs> that's the one thing I insist on with them, why, why I use that, the examples I use. So like people who are hard-headed, you know. <laughs> Being hard-headed is a part of achieving your individuality. Mm. You know, that you just, you just have to understand where you are in time and space and make sure you don't talk to, you, make sure you respect your opponent. That's one thing. We look at so many movies <laughs> that if you don't have real life experience, you don't understand. Sometimes you're looking at something that, don't, that can't be talked to the way you want to talk. Hmm. You choose your words a certain way. You know, sometimes I, I would tell, talk with my friends and I'd say, don't worry, 
Just talk to them like you talk to the dudes in your neighborhood, and you're going to be all right. <laughs> the ones that you don't really want to mess with, you talk to them like that. Find that level of respect. Hmm. So, you know, it's... I mean, I think that you, that's such a great point. You know, you really, you really, I feel like unlock a different uh, level of respect when you find your individual, your individuality and your voice and you're able to, to really yeah. say what you mean. Right. And then you're able to, to respect that in other people and not feel like you're the only one who's, who thinks something. Mm. We all think of something. We all be have, have beliefs. We all, we're not all willing to pay certain prices for it, which was sometimes just common sense. Mm. But, and uh, I think too, for, for another, another thing I was thinking about when we talk about freedom, I, I'll never forget the, the series called Wade in the Water. I love the song Wade in the Water. It's a song about freedom. But I love the, the, the 1994 NPR series. If anybody can get to that, whew, Bernice Reagan was for real. You know, I mean, just Sweet Honey in the Rock, oh, what they did in that. Wade in the Water, 1994, Public Radio. Get to that series. I, I remember when I was writing, learn, trying to learn how to write stuff, I studied that a lot. You know, I go back to the resource material and, and listen to all the early groups and everything, but this was like kind of contemporary music curated with a lot of great information. And it's a, a lifetime of study went into that. So mm. I'm going to have to Google that after this. That sounds, okay. that sounds very interesting. I think it's 26 hours. I'm not sure. It could be 24. I hope it's an extra two hours because I feel like you know, I'm going to love it. I want that extra two hours after I'm done with it. You know, it, I'm telling you, it's something. And I wanted to, I wanted to bring up um, the, the wonderful Freddie Cole who, who graced us every year with his presence at Dizzy's. If you can speak on him a bit, he, you know, just passed. But what a force and what a legacy he left behind. You know, Freddie, just pure soul. Like that, that kind of generation of musicians, class, always clean, all the songs are full of history and feeling. Just the, the kind of warmth and intelligence. We lost so many of uh, so many people in this last time, you know. Not all to COVID, just. And I, I was thinking, I was thinking about, about Freddie. We, we, I got was receiving a lot of text messages about him, and uh, anybody who booked him, you know, we were booking him, so we loved him. Just working with him, we just. He was always in Disney's, and he just was always soulful. He's just like always a kind of go to, mm. where he just come and just and uh we think about jimmy heath too you know before we started the lockdown we were supposed to do a big thing for jimmy in in the rolls rolls hall and i was just thinking man the, one of the first things we got to do when we get back is we got to get back and collect jimmy and talk about him so yeah it's just the kind of soul and feeling want they had this you know every time when, when you when 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 we lose them some more of us got to step up with that same with, with with that same feeling, we ain't gonna have the knowledge, but we can have the feeling. Mm -hmm. And that feeling says a lot when you're able to carry someone's feeling and soul. I know that's and you pass yeah. that down. And... Yeah, make that be an objective, not just buying something. You know, mm -hmm. make that be an objective, and that's part of what we were talking about in the beginning. If yeah. your objective on a bandstand is to make somebody else sound better, and it is to give them space to play, y'all gonna all be be a lot happier. Then it might take them a little while to understand, wow, that's your objective. I don't have to play all night because I'm going to get another opportunity. It's like when you're playing ball with somebody who never passed the basketball. When you get it, you're going to shoot it. But now if they discriminate, you get it, hey, you don't mind giving it back because you think I'm going to give it back. I might get it again. So you go from survival of the fittest, dog eat dog, dog, eat dog to playing ball and passing mm -hmm. and sharing. You know, The Golden State Warriors have been showing us for the last years what sharing the ball is about. Come on now. That's something that you said uh, last Wednesday that really sat with me that I've been thinking about is that story about, about your brother when you were, you were talking to your mom <laughs> right. about, you know, we need more food, we need more food, and then he right. put a bit of his food onto your plate and goes, right. we have more food now. Now we have more, right? You yeah. do it as a joke. Oh, man, can I get some more? Now we have more. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah that was old Branford. And we, we, call him, we call him Bookie in those days. Book. Book? Where did the book come from? Where does book, that begin? Bradford book. I don't know. We just, you know, something. Everybody have a nickname there. They're not like people that. have nicknames too, though. It's still a lot of good nicknames out there. I wanted to, we have a couple more minutes. I wanted to get to some, some questions as well. Sure. There was, how do you recommend people balancing practicing and playing for fun? Practicing is playing for fun. So <laughs> when you practice, make it fun. Play dynamics. Play every exercise like it's a piece of music. 
Mm. Do your long tones like that. Do your technical exercise. Pay attention to dynamics. Play it in all the keys. Make it fun, challenging for you. It's like it's like some people they don't want to work out. Some people get to a workout and they make it fun. They challenge themselves. Make up variations on things. You know, so don't separate the practice from 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 just playing. And once that practicing becomes fun, every time you look at your horn, you go have a good time. Fantastic. Or your instrument. If it's not a horn, your instrument. Even if you sing. Um, and talking about trumpets, uh, what are good trumpet solos to transcribe? And should you write your own transcriptions out? I'm a fan of learning stuff without writing it down first. Uh, mm. And I like when you start learn the solos that are, that are kind of, the, you have the easiest time to play that have a lot of nuance. Like I always thought with, with John Fattis, we talk about, man, how did you ever think to, to, to try to take a, a Dizzy solo off the record? Dizzy playing is so, so, so difficult. So you want to graduate to that kind of way of playing. But it's always good to start with some early Miles, early, uh, early Louis Armstrong, 1920s, hot fives, hot sevens. Not that that's easy to play. It's very difficult to play. But playing with a lot of nuances. And then also just who you like. We all, so many great musicians have played and we all like different things. If you find yourself attracted to a musician's personality and the way that they play, learn their solo. And, and, and learn, learn, to, learn to sing, learn to sing the solo and then sing it enough so that you know it and then play it on your horn the way you sang it. Because so much information will never be written down. The way they scoop a note here, what's a feeling of joy, how they get sorrow in a certain note, a little scrape on something, a little turn right here, dread, laying back. Learn stuff by ear. I, I'm, I'm a big believer in the natural hearing is going to be much more sophisticated and more definitive than anything you write down. You're only writing the surface of a note. So that's my suggestion. Learn things by ear and learn them from memory. And listen to them so much that you can't help but know them. I once heard Tony Williams sing the entire Kind of Blue record we had on the drive through Japan. And I swear to you, he sang every note of every solo on the entire record. So that's how serious he was about playing. That must have been something to hear. It was unbelievable. And, and in general, the education that he would bring many times, because he studied all the drummer styles. Did you see him sit down to the drums and play? What he learned from Elvin Jones? What he learned from Art Blakey? What he learned from Buddy Rich? What he learned from Alan Dawson? What he learned from hearing Philly Joe Jones play? And he, he was so specific. What Max Roach did and how he would finish a phrase. It's a master class, just a master class in the type of dedication required for mastery. Wow, thank you for that. And and I wanna before we before we wrap up, a couple of things. Um, Wenton will be a special guest on well, the Washington Post IG Live this Friday at two PM uh, Eastern time. So you should check that out. That's gonna be a fun one. And I wanna thank you all so much for tuning in. As I mentioned in the beginning, we're gonna take a little bit of a hiatus here, a little summer hiatus of Wednesdays with Winton. We have a ton of really exciting programming that we'll be announcing soon. And as Winton mentioned before, the uh, month of uh, July, we'll be talking all about freedom, the spirit of freedom in and, and all, and all different ways, all different genres of freedom. So I uh, hope you guys will check back and go to jazz.org and follow us on our socials to uh, see what uh, is coming up. And when's it anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up? No, Maddie, you know, I'm not going to see you here, but we're going to have a lot more meetings this month. <laughs> so. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> you saying that now, let's see. <laughs> much, much love to all of y'all. Thank you so much. Uh, let's handle our business. Thanks, Winton. Right. Yes, indeed. Maddie. Bye. All right.